Hey guys, what's up? So it's time for another eBay unboxing. And all right, let me get my cutter. Ah, we got a big thank you. This is really sweet. Deanna, thank you so much. How pretty. That was really nice. So far, this is packed pretty good. And there's two items in here. Let's make sure there's no three. <laughs> Sometimes you get lucky and they throw an extra thing in. One open and one more to go. Cool. All right. So what is it? Let's check it out. All right, so here they are right here. Two beautiful old snuff boxes. And as you can see, I have a small collection and hopefully it'll grow soon. Um, I like these smalls. I call them smalls because you can fit them anywhere in your collection. Now the seller, I got lucky on these two. She thought they were Lucite plastic and she said Lucite plastic trinket boxes. And uh, she had a $30 buy it now with a make an offer. I offered her 15 thinking there's no way in hell she's going to accept such a low offer and all of a sudden it said pay now and I was like blown away um, because that was really lucky okay so here are some of the ones in my collection this one probably being the oldest one from about 1789 to about 1830 that's the age of this one and it's um actually made out of a cowrie shell and uh, on the very very bottom of this cowrie shell is a beautiful beautiful black lip pearl carving and it's actually Asian. And uh, you can see the various little carvings on this little two and a half inch by two inch snuff box. And uh, that is nothing short of extraordinary. Okay, and then you can see they were made out of all different materials. Now the cheapest being made out of potato starch. I've seen ones made out of lacquer. Actually, I do have uh, two of them that are made out of black lacquer from about the Civil War era. And uh, these being very old, these ones made out of horn. So um, these ones are probably Georgian. And uh, I'm not very good on my history, but I think it's from like the 1810 uh, time frame to the 1850s or so. And uh, this one is really interesting. Now, I was going to take the lid off to show it to you. It has a very, very tight seal. That's the thing. Snuff boxes once held tobacco. Actually, um, like uh, very pulverized, very, very um, fine tobacco that had almost a scent to it. And it was very popular starting from the 1400s, um, around the time of Christopher Columbus, all the way up into about the mid 1800s. Um, so about around 1850 and on, it started waning in popularity. Even women were uh, taking snuff, which is quite interesting. And people would get an instantaneous hit from the nicotine, um, of course, by snorting it up their nose. Um, quite interesting. Now, um, it started at first snuff being uh, taken by the most expensive, expensive, um, I mean, the richest people, um, the aristocrats, um, and they would have all these little fancy little boxes, some made out of gold, some made out of silver, some with precious gems. Um, and then, you know, over the hundreds of years later, um, time frame after Christopher Columbus started this in um, England, um, it started to become more affordable. So you would have more inexpensive boxes, generally made out of like cow horn. And so this one is unmistakably Georgian. And the cool part is um, this lid would pop off and it makes such a tight seal to keep it fresh that I could not even get this off without breaking it. And I'm not going to even attempt it because horn is very brittle. It's a very, very, very brittle material. You can see it has some like little nicks in it and flea bites and like little chippings and stuff. So you don't wanna mess with it too much. What's cool about this is the person could fill it up and then turn this little propeller and pour it out into the palm of their hands, I guess, or a spoon or however they used to take it. Okay, oops, we dropped it. What's also cool about this is it has the original owner's initials engraved in it. So they, uh, well, they didn't do it very, very masterfully, but um, that's uh, pretty cool. So his initials were MFB. And this may have been another one of his boxes because it was sold by the same seller. And this is also Georgian. 
and it's made out of, a, I believe, cow horn. A lot of times, too, these would be made in Scotland and England, and I can't even get this open. It's sealed so tight that uh, lifting the lid up is almost impossible to do on camera. Let me try to do it. Hold on one second. Okay, so I cut it open, and it made a popping sound once I uh, broke the seal. Um, let's see, do we see any snuff in there? I think this was cleaned out pretty well. Okay, there we go. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty, pretty cool. And again, look at that beautiful pattern. Now I could see why she thought it could have been Lucite, because it's a little bit see-through. You know, you can see through it a little if you hold it under the light. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. So I would be, you know, mistaken it for a Lucite or a plastic, too, if I didn't know anything about it. Here's some other ones in my collection. Here's, um, I believe, a Swiss one or a German one, uh, probably uh, from the 1870s, 1880s, maybe a little earlier. I could be wrong. Time frame. Really pretty. Carved. So it could be Black Forest or Swiss. Really, really nice. And uh, this one slides open. It's a slide box. This one is... Like some kind of a burr birch or burl, burl wood. And these um, sometimes are Georgian as well um, to the 1860s or so. And a lot of times um, these were Russian. Um, they have another name for that. I think it's called Karelian. And so if it's not burl, it's probably Karelian wood. Let's try to get this open and look inside. There you go. And uh, I'm going to do a quick cutaway in a second and show you uh, some of these other ones. Okay, this is another early one. And I, as you can see, it has the seal broken because um, when I pushed it down and closed it, I could not get it open and I had to get a butter knife to pop this up. So I'm not gonna push it all the way down again because if I wanna take the ring and pull it open again to look inside, it's gonna be like something that's almost impossible to break the seal. These things have amazing seals on them. It's absolutely amazing. Again, probably another Georgian one, or possibly earlier from the late 1700s. All right, I'm gonna take you to a cutaway and show you different various um, snuff boxes and what to look for. So as you can see, not all snuff boxes were made out of um, like cow horn. Um, some of them were made out of precious, uh, very precious metals like gold. Um, here's some other examples of really fancy ones. 14 karat gold, 1840. Here's some English ones. And I'm sorry, I'm, uh, I'm actually filming my computer screen. Some used um, hard stones on top, especially carnelians. I'm going to show you another one that actually is the same one as mine. Here we go. And this was uh, labeled at an um, auction as Antique Georgian Horn Snuff Box. And uh, yeah, pretty cool. The reserve price on that was $78. The shipping price, I couldn't believe it when I saw it. What does it say? It I think it said yeah, $41.60 in shipping plus the $78. Jeez Louise. Okay, and uh, here's some other ones that are like mine. There we go. And uh, we just saw that the same one with the little... A uh, pull top that I uh, showed you, the pull tab. Again, here's another one. And uh, yeah, you can see they came in all different kinds of styles. Um, let me just X out of this and show you. Here's some other styles. Here we go. Let's go up. Some were made out of tortoise shell. And you can see tortoise shell goes for a lot of money. Um, then we have these ones that are shaped like uh, horns, actual horns. Um, those are very early, generally. Is a Native American one. Um, this one's really intricate with brass on it. Uh, we have another horn one, really cool, hand carved. This one's fine English carved. Um, it looks like maybe scrimshaw. Then we have, uh, ones that are made out of lacquer. Some that are made out of paper mache, like this black one to the right. Um, wow, look at that one. That one's cool. That's an 18th century Italian one. Some made out of brass. There we go. Again, all different kinds of horn. This one's circa 1850. And again, those beautiful horns. Look at that. A Scottish ram's horn. Tortoiseshell. Tortoiseshell. If you can find tortoiseshell, it goes for big bucks in good condition. Here's some other kinds of ones. Um, really, really awesome. So there you go. So now you get an idea of what to look for. And they're always like generally like little boxes. Um, a lot of times the bigger ones, like say this one would be a table snuff box. 
So uh, sometimes they made uh, ones that weren't just pocket size, but they were for a whole entire table. And here's some other examples of them. Really, really, it's amazing to collect these. The problem is, is finding like these beautiful ones like that or like that or tortoise shell is going to set you back several hundred dollars. Um, you're not going to find them for cheap. Sometimes you find them for cheap and uh, like I did on uh, eBay and uh, you snag a score, you know, and you're like overjoyed. But these type of ones, forget about it. <laughs> you're going to be spending a lot of money on that. As a matter of fact, how much is this? Let's click on that one because that one is just absolutely beautiful. And what are they selling it for? Uh, wow, look at that. They're selling that for $6,750. I have really good taste, don't I? Wow, look at that. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys all soon. And I'm always on the hunt for cool things like this because I'm telling you, um, there's just something really magnificent about these old boxes. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys shortly.